Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 3. In this video, we're going to learn about solving linear equations in one variable. So back in Algebra 1, we learned how to solve a linear equation in one variable. And hopefully at this point, you've completely mastered that concept. But in case you haven't, we're going to do a full review in this video here. And that's going to serve as a stepping stone for the more challenging types of equations that we're going to look at in Algebra 2. All right, so you will recall that a linear equation in one variable looks like this. We have AX plus B equals C. So if you're in a textbook following along, you'll see something like this. And this is a generic form that you get. A, B, and C are just representing real numbers. So this right here, this right here, and this right here. So we'll put A, B, and C are real numbers. And then there's one exception to this. A, which is the coefficient for x, cannot be 0. So A cannot be 0. And obviously that's the case because we want our x to be there. We want our variable to be there. If I put a 0 in for A, 0 times anything is just 0. So this would disappear. Right? We would no longer have a linear equation in one variable. So we've got to have that restriction there. Now because this type of equation contains real numbers and a single variable, in this case it's x, raised to the first power, we sometimes refer to this type of equation as a first degree equation. So you might hear that in your class. So some examples, and I know we've seen many of these, but 3x plus 5 equals 7. So that's a linear equation in one variable. Or something like 2z minus 5 equals, I don't know, let's say 11. Or let's say negative 27y plus square root of 2 equals negative 15. These are each an example of a linear equation in one variable. Now something that wouldn't be a linear equation in one variable. Let's say you had two variables involved. So something like 2x minus 3y equals 7. Or something with an exponent on the variable that's higher than 1. So let's say 3x squared minus 5 equals 2. So these two right here would not be an example of a linear equation in one variable. All right, so let's take a look at 2x plus 3 equals 9. And we see here that we have x equals 3. So the first thing we're kind of taught when we start learning about equations is that the solution to an equation is a number, or it could be more than one number in some cases, that when it replaces the variable, or you could have variables involved, it's going to give you a true statement. So what that means is that if x is equal to 3, if I plug a 3 in for x in this equation, What's going to happen is the left and the right side will be the same value. So to demonstrate this, let's say I have 2, and then I substitute a 3 in for x, then plus 3 equals 9. So over here, 2 times 3 is 6, so I'd have 6 plus 3 equals 9. And then 6 plus 3 is 9, so you get 9 equals 9. This is what you're looking for, the same value on the left as on the right. So that's how you know you got the right answer. Right, x does equal 3 here. And to kind of further expand on this, let's say I chose something like x equals 4. And I said, is that the solution? Well, I'd erase these two and say, well, 2 times 4 is 8. So I'd have 8 plus 3, which is 11. And no, this 11 does not equal 9. This would be a false statement. This is, this is false. So x does not equal 4. That's wrong. Right? We know x equals 3. So how do we go about solving a linear equation in one variable? You're not always going to be presented with the answer and just say, hey, plug this in and see if it works. So we use two properties when we first start solving equations. The first one is the addition property of equality. It tells us we can add the same value to both sides of an equation, and we will not affect the solution. So if I have something like 2x plus 3 equals 9, we just saw that. We know the solution is x equals 3. Okay, We know that. Let's say I was to add negative 4 to both sides of the equation. So let's say we do 2x plus 3. Then I'm going to add negative 4 over here. And I'm going to add negative 4 over here. And so what's going to happen is 3 plus negative 4 is what? That's negative 1. 
So I have 2x minus 1 over here. And then 9 plus negative 4 is 5. This equals 5. So now if I plug a 3 in for x, will I still get a true statement? Some of you might think that you won't, but you will. If I plug a 3 in there, I'd have 2 times 3 minus 1 equals 5. We know this would be 6 minus 1 equals 5, and you get 5 equals 5. So I added the same value to each side of the equation, and it did not affect my solution. My solution was x equals 3 before, and it's x equals 3 afterwards. Now the other property we want to know right away is the multiplication property of equality. Now you'll recall that this property tells us that we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number and it will not affect the solution. Okay, and remember, you multiply by zero, it becomes zero, so that you can't use zero in this. It has to be a non-zero value. So for example, 2x plus 3 equals 9. We know this equation has a solution of x equals 3. If I multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2, would I still have x equals 3 as the solution? Let's try it out. So 2x plus 3, let's use parentheses here, multiply negative 2 by this side. Let's multiply negative 2 by this side. Scroll down, get a little room going. Use my distributive property, negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. And then negative 2 times 3 is going to be minus 6. And this equals 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Now, if I plug in a 3, 4x, am I going to get a true statement? Let's see. Negative 4 times 3 minus 6 is equal to negative 18. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So you'd have negative 12 minus 6 equals negative 18. And scroll down just a little bit more. And what we're going to have is that negative 12 minus 6 is negative 18. So you get negative 18 equals negative 18. So you can see that before we multiplied both sides of the equation by negative 2, the solution was x equals 3. After we multiplied both sides of the equation by negative 2, the solution was still x equals 3. So multiplying both sides of the equation by the same non-zero value allowed us to keep the same solution. All right, so now that we've covered some of the basics, let's talk about the procedure to actually solve a linear equation in one variable. Before I start here, I just want you to put this down on a piece of paper. Your main goal is to isolate the variable. So you want x or y or z or whatever the variable is on one side of the equation, and you want a number on the other. So this is how we go about doing that. We want to simplify each side separately. So that means you're going to clear parentheses, combine like terms on each side. Okay, you just want to completely simplify each side. Then we want to isolate the variable terms on one side of the equation. We're going to do this by using our addition property of equality. Then we want to isolate the variable. And we're going to do this using our multiplication property of equality. And then lastly, we're going to check the solution in the original equation. So we take our solution and we plug it back in for the variable in the original equation. And we make sure that the left and the right side are equal. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some practice problems. And we're going to start out with, we have negative 9 times the quantity p plus 6 this is equal to negative 4 times the quantity 1 plus p. So our variable here, and I'll just highlight it, is p. So what we want to do is start out by simplifying each side separately. So I'm going to use my distributive property here. Negative 9 times p is negative 9p. Then I have negative 9 times 6, and that's negative 54. So then this is equal to, I'm going to use my distributive property over here. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And then negative 4 times p is minus 4p. So now that I've got in this format, remember, I want to isolate the variable terms on one side of the equation. So a variable term just means a term with a variable involved. So that would be this term and this term. So what I can do is I can either move this over here or I can move this over there. It doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add 4p to both sides of the equation. And what is that going to do? If I have negative 4p plus positive 4p, those two are going to cancel, right? This becomes 0. Now, over here, I would have negative 9p plus 4p. That's negative 5p. Then minus 54 equals negative 4. 
Now I want to isolate this term on this side of the equation. And to do that, if I have this minus 54 here, I've got to get rid of it. And what I do is I want to use my addition property of equality again. If I have minus 54, I just add 54 to both sides of the equation. Negative 54 plus 54 is zero, right? That gets rid of that. And so what I'm left with here is negative 5p by itself, it's isolated on the left side, is equal to negative 4 plus 54. Negative 4 plus 54 is 50. Now, the third step says we want to isolate the variable. How are we going to do that? Let's take a look at this variable. And I know a lot of you just know the answer to this because you solved a lot of these already. If I want to isolate that variable, which is p, I've got to get rid of that negative 5. That's the coefficient of p. Well, what's the opposite of multiplication? If negative 5 is multiplying p, the opposite is division. So what I can do is I can divide by negative 5. And what that does is any non-zero number divided by itself is 1. So negative 5 over negative 5 is 1. 1 times p is the same thing as p. Now I can do this provided I do it to the other side. That's part of the multiplication property of equality. It extends to division. So I divide this side by negative 5 as well to make it legal. And what I have is just p on the left side. On the right side, 50 divided by negative 5 is negative 10. So this is my solution. p equals negative 10. And at this point, we're going to start writing things in solution set notation. And a solution set is just a set whose elements are solutions to our equation. So in this case, the set would have one element, and that element would be negative 10. So I just put negative 10 inside of set braces. And so your teacher is still going to accept this as an answer. But more traditionally, as we move up, we would write it using the set notation. So negative 10 is our answer here. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you how to check this. Let me erase everything. OK, so what I want to do is I want to plug in a negative 10 everywhere I see a P. So I'm going to plug a negative 10 in here and also here. And we want to make sure the left and the right side are equal to each other. So you'd have negative 9 times the quantity, negative 10 plus 6, and this is equal to negative 4 times the quantity, 1 plus negative 10. OK. So negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. So you'd have negative 9 times negative 4. And this should be equal to, inside of here, 1 plus negative 10 is negative 9. So you'd have negative 4 times negative 9. You can already see this is the same value. Negative 9 times negative 4 is 36. So you'd have 36 on the left is equal to 36 on the right. So you have the same value on each side of the equation. So that tells you that your solution which is p equals negative 10, is correct. All right, let's take a look at the next example. So we have 4r plus 5r is equal to 5 times the quantity 3 minus 7r minus 3 times the quantity 5 minus 9r. So again, I want to simplify each side separately. So 4r plus 5r is 9r. I'm just combining like terms there. So this is 9r. This is equal to, use my distributive property here, 5 times 3 is 15 minus 5 times 7r is 35r. And then I have, I might as well th treat this as negative 3. So negative 3 times 5 is minus 15. And then negative 3 times negative 9r is positive 27r. And I can combine more like terms here. 15 minus 15 is 0. So this would cancel. And then negative 35r plus 27r is negative 8r. So you get that 9r is equal to negative 8r. So now I want to move all my variable terms to one side. So in this equation, I just have variable terms. I have 9r and I have negative 8r. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add 8r to this side of the equation. If I have negative 8r plus 8r, this becomes 0. Make sure you write 0. That's very important. So I'll put 0 here. And then over here, I'll have 9r plus 8r, which is 17r. Now I want to isolate the variable. In order to do that, again, if I want to isolate r, and 17 is multiplying r, to get r by itself, I divide both sides of the equation by 17. This will cancel with this and become 1. So I'll have 1r, or just r. And this will be equal to 
0 over 17, which is 0. So my solution set contains one element, and that element is 0. Now, if you want to check this, I'm not going to in the interest of time. All you want to do is plug a 0 in for each r in the original equation. So there, 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 and there. And you'll see that the left and the right side will give you the same value. And that's how you know your solution is correct. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 7 plus 6b plus 1 plus 12b is equal to 4 times the quantity 5b minus 2 minus the quantity 7b minus 6. So on this side, I can combine these two and these two. 7 plus 1 is 8. 6b plus 12b is 18b. Over here, I use my distributive property. 4 times 5b is 20b. Then minus 4 times 2 is 8. Then I'm going to treat this as a phantom negative 1. So instead of having this minus out here, I'm going to put plus negative 1. And I'm going to use my distributive property. Negative 1 times 7b is minus 7b. And then negative 1 times negative 6 is plus 6. So over here, I can think about 20b minus 7b is 13b. Okay, this is 13b. And then negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. So now, again, I want to bring all the variable terms to one side, and I want all the numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract 13b away from each side of the equation so that this is gone. So 18b minus 13b is 5b. And I'm also going to subtract 8 away from each side of the equation. So this is gone. So I'll put equals. Negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. So now I have a variable term on one side and a number on the other. All I need to do at this point is isolate the variable. So I want to isolate b. And again, if I want to isolate b and 5 is multiplying b, I just divide by 5, okay, I divide by 5. This is going to cancel with this and become a 1. 1 times b is the same as b, so I've isolated the variable. So I'll have b is equal to negative 10 over 5, which is negative 2. So my solution set here will contain one element, just negative 2. Now, again, if you want to check this in the original equation, go everywhere you see a b, so here, 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 and here, plug in a negative 2, and you'll see that the left and the right side are equal, and so we'll know that our solution here, b equals negative 2, is correct.